Hello and welcome to The O Show. I'm Lakshmi Kanthanath with Nasir Harasi. Today we're in a different place altogether. We are at Sultan Qaboos University and there is a grand ceremony that is happening, a conference to be uh, precise. And this conference has brought together lots of scientists and researchers together under one roof. And it's the fourth science and technology exchange program in Islamic countries. And we've just joined Professor Dr. Jafri and uh, Mali and Abdullah. Abdullah. So he is Dr. Actually, a brain surgeon. I'm a surgical neurologist. Surgical neurologist, as well as a scientist. And a neuroscientist. And the hot topic when we think about brain surgery and the brain and the mind and everything, it's got to be dementia. And is this a favorite subject with you? It is a subject that we are studying. Uh, it's a subject, a very important subject in my country where I come from, which is Malaysia, because we have a very fast aging population. Mm -hmm. So there are two processes of aging of the brain, where, where you have healthy brain aging, okay. and you have unhealthy brain aging. So when you have unhealthy brain aging, you may have problems like dementia. Okay, so that would be something that everyone would be keen on knowing. What is unhealthy brain aging? Okay. What are we doing wrong when we have unhealthy brain? Okay, when we have an unhealthy brain, mm -hmm. it can be due to many factors. Okay. It can be due to the environment that we stay in. Okay. Unhealthy air, unhealthy water that we drink, unhealthy infection that we get. Oh. And these are not uh, infections that we get like the common cold. Mm -hmm. These bacteria or viruses stay in our system for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And it's hypothesized that certain viruses can lead to dementia. Okay. Very slow over years, 10, 20, 30 years. Now, um, we, we were discussing much earlier on with Dr. Uh, Jaffrey, and Dr. Jaffrey pointed out that Alzheimer's is something that we all talk about, but it's only one small element of dementia. Yeah. It's a huge field. Okay. When you talk about the word dementia, mm -hmm. you lose three senses. Mm -hmm. You lose the ability to, what happened yesterday, my memory, mm -hmm. the way you think. Mm -hmm. You lose all these abilities mm -hmm. and you forget about your daily senses. So what is actually happened is when Dementia, 80% of dementia is Alzheimer's. Okay. 80% of dementia in the current popula world population that we study. The other 20% are other diseases that may be associated with loss of memory, okay. loss of thinking, decision making, etc. So when a person goes to see a medical doctor, he doesn't say, Doctor, I have dementia. No. Mm -hmm. I forgot, I'm forgetting this. Mm -hmm. I'm forgetting something that happened five minutes ago. Right. I cannot make decisions. You know, I have changes in behavior. Mm -hmm. So these are important. And that means the patient is still aware of the differences. In the, in the first phase of dementia, mm -hmm. remember that uh, dementia have got different phases. Okay. And if you put them, you put Alzheimer's into the picture, Alzheimer's has got different sections or phases as well. Mm -hmm. And most of us, especially in the Muslim country, we come in the later phase. So when we come to the later phase, the doctor is unable to be able to treat us effectively. Mm -hmm. So we want our fellow Muslims or our fellow human beings mm -hmm. to come early. The best is to come even before dementia sets in. How would they know that they could have a problem with dementia? Is it genetics? Oh yeah, genetics. Well, they have found some genes that are associated with memory loss. Okay. I will not use the word dementia, but memory loss. Mm -hmm. And these happen as young as 20 years of age. Okay. And we call it familial diseases. Yes. Not very common. Only 1 to 5% of the world population have these problems. Okay. The others happen at the age of 60. And then in 60 thereafter, as you kick into 80, 85, mm -hmm. now World Health Organization have said that 70 years old is a young person. Yes. So anything below 70 is young. And at a young age of 60, mm -hmm. you can get loss of memory. You can decide. Mm -hmm. You are depressed. You have behavior changes. Mm -hmm. So these things are important for the family member 
Because if this. I have it, I may not realize it. Mm. My wife or my daughter or my children or my grandchildren might realize that I'm losing mm. my senses. Okay. In, in terms of medication, uh, as you said, if they come earlier, maybe there could be some improvement. Is there really a cure okay. from a medical perspective? Uh, I wouldn't say it's sad or not, but we have tried our best. Mm -hmm. Since dementia was, uh, was um, recognized, especially via the famous disease, Alzheimer's disease, mm -hmm. in 1911, mm -hmm. you know, now it's 2018, yes. there have been 200 over clinical trials. Okay. That's a lot of clinical trials. Okay. And only five drugs right. are available at the moment. Why is that? Because you find even the five drugs are not drugs that really work. Mm -hmm. They, you know, stabilize the condition, but in the end, the patient with Alzheimer's, especially, will become worse. Mm -hmm. And if it is another set of disease, we see the other twenty percent diseases that we may able to help. Mm -hmm. For example, there are certain diseases that if you do surgery mm -hmm. or you may give certain treatment, mm -hmm. they will be able to improve. Okay. But there are others that. Also, we say a slow death, uh -huh. you know, so in the other 20%. Okay. So, so, so it's still bad news for dementia. Mm. Some people say it's the protein build up in the brain or uh, is there really ways people say if you take almonds, it can help you with your memory? And the brain is a very complicated thing yes. and you're a surgeon, yes. brain surgeon. Yes. I, I, so, I see that you attended the conference, yes. you know, listen to mm -hmm. our friend from uh, food technology. Mm -hmm. And it's true, almonds do help, okay. but almonds can help when it's at the early stage. Early stage. You know? And when oh. I use the word help, it's not cure. Okay. It helps, but you know, taking a, a, a whole a, you know, a one kilogram of almonds today mm -hmm. will not make me improve my memory by five times. Okay. I have to take it and I have to do brain exercises at the same time. Such as? Well, <clears throat> the best exercise for the brain, believe it or not, is brisk walking mm -hmm. from here right to the mosque mm -hmm. and back, you know, mm -hmm. maybe uh, five okay. times a day, five okay. times a day, you know, okay. you go to pray. Okay. That's the best exercise. Instead of going into a car, starting mm -hmm. and driving mm -hmm. to the mosque, walking to the mosque is the best exercise. Mm -hmm. And the exercise has to be constant. It has to be sustainable mm -hmm. so that the, it, what it will do is it will increase the volume of the neurons. It will not increase the number of brain cells. Okay. It will make them more stronger. Okay. It will make them uh, more, uh, they can connect more with the other neurons. Okay. Therefore, improve in the way of thinking and decision making. Uh, just like uh, bodybuilding then? Yes. And when one stops doing exercise, they go back. It's uh, like when I do no shrink. exercise, yeah. my muscles shrink mm -hmm. and my brain cells shrink as well. So this is something that everyone must think about, yes. whether they have it in their family yeah. or the young or old. Yes, um, and it's transcultural. Transcultural. You know, yeah. the, the Chinese may not want to jog at the age of 80, mm. but they, you, they do their little wushu yes. exercises yes. Yes. and other Chinese or oriental exercises. Okay. Even meditation and yoga mm -hmm. done properly will increase the size of the neuron. Okay. and the volume of the brain. Okay. So the volume of the brain is something very interesting what doctor explained because there are a lot of researches going on and I think it's the brain banks that the European world has or the Western world. And it, you, you were just telling me that after four hours of the death, the brain actually changes. Yes, because it's called liquefactive necrosis. Uh, within four hours, even, slightly, even more uh, earlier, the faster we get in a human country like this, mm -hmm. liquefactive necrosis will be pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So one would have to, let's say, if he wants to donate his brain to science, I am a patient with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. I want to donate my brain to science. So if I die at 12 o'clock, mm -hmm. in the next 15 minutes, someone has already taken out my brain mm -hmm. and donated my brain to the brain bank. Mm -hmm. So when you have hundreds and thousands of brains that you can study, then you can find the real cause of diseases like Alzheimer's or dementia or other diseases. But you also found out that, uh, the science has found out that certain vaccinations actually blocks Alzheimer's indirectly. Mm, yeah, I mean that's your word, but yeah. if you Google it and you look yeah. in lit literature, yes. there are at least two big scientific groups, mainly United States of America, 
people have been looking at the effects of viruses mm -hmm. on dementia mm -hmm. or Alzheimer's. And they have proposed that certain vaccines can, DNA vaccines, can be made for Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Coming soon to the world mm -hmm. near you. Okay. Yes, you know. Okay. But if you look back to the literature, they have found out that people who are immunized against hemophilus and influenza vaccines that they take during the winter, mm -hmm. they are least likely, statistically, least likely to get loss of memory or decrease in abnormal memory in the long run. Okay. I will not use the word Alzheimer, but okay, you know, yes, we will yes. use the word global memory, word, yeah. memory dementia, etc. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's a look at dementia and uh, you being a brain surgeon and a scientist, what would you like to look into or foresee uh, that would come as a solution to dementia? Okay, whether we like it or not, the population of the world will grow older and older. Mm -hmm. We have the groups of people where we have healthy brain aging mm -hmm. with or without subtle memory loss. And you have those which are abnormal with Alzheimer's and the other groups of dementia. So whether we like it or not, if we want to be healthy as we grow older, yes. we have to make sure that our brain still stays in a good shape. Okay. How do you do that without spending thousands of Omani yes. rounds, you know, exercise, food, and then I think we have to constantly read. If you know my, my Prime Minister who's 93 years mm -hmm. old, Mahade, mm -hmm. Don Mahade, he reads a lot. Uh, he does also exercise. Mm -hmm. So those things are very important for us people, younger and young, mm -hmm. less than 70 years, to, to work our brains so that we stay healthy until one day the scientific committee, my gang of scientists, can find the true cure for Alzheimer's disease. And that will be after finding out the true cause. Yes. Okay. And that needs a lot of research and it's a lot of finance, mm -hmm. funds from government and non-governmental agents and like we discussed in this conference, to work together between countries because one group of scientists cannot solve this problem and find a cure. Okay. It will take thousands of scientists and a few more years to solve this problem. Okay, a few more years. Meanwhile, we can rest assured with seven almonds a day as a uh, Food technologist professor. Yeah, sir. that's not what I said. Okay. You know? Yeah, it helps, but it helps. It helps. But, but there, there is a way of doing it. You know, he says that you take the almonds, yes. and the almonds have to be kept overnight. Soak. Yeah. soak. Yeah. You take the effect from soak almonds are much much better yeah. than taking dry almonds like three times a day. You know, okay. so but almonds is just one way to help. You can, like I say, you take lots of elements, but you don't exercise, you don't yes, exercise yes. your brain, it still doesn't work. So you have to exercise the walk. Yes. Walking is good for the brain and yeah. reading. Reading, yes. And staying healthy in mind. As yes. Well. well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Avoid Dr. smoking. Dr. Avoid smoking. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? I didn't know. Dementia. <laughs> and had, alcohol. And alcohol. Yes. I didn't know they had connection with dementia. Oh, yes. Just a, a polluted air. Yes. Have, they have, didn't study. The paper just yes. came out this year, this this past few weeks. Okay. Persons who stayed close to the road, okay. exposed to air pollution, uh -huh. are twelve times more likely okay. to have memory loss, dementia, okay. and or Alzheimer's okay. compared to those who stayed further away from the main roads and air polluted mm -hmm. areas. In rural areas. Yeah, but we, we're not going to create a panic where every Omani will start their car and move away from Muscat <laughs> and stay in the mountains, for example. You know? But these things are important. Air pollution is important. Air pollution is important. So those are the ideas. That's what you get by having a conversation with a scientist. And I want to say thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Jaffrey Malin and uh, Abdullah. And uh, he's been here for the conference, STEP, Science and Technology Exchange Program, organized uh, here in the Sultan Campus University by SKU and Mustafa Foundation for Science and Technology. Thank you, sir, and enjoy Oman. Thank you from Malaysia. I hope my information has been helpful. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. You've been with the O Show. We'll be back next week. Until then, take care.